Hi there, this is Nate McEwen, graduate student at Iowa State University, continuing my series of videos here for architecture for Rhino, or I should say Rhino for architecture. Uh, these videos are going to be uh, displaying Rhino's capabilities to create uh, pieces of architecture, uh, modeled specifically after these serpentine pavilions as practice. In module one, we did mainly most off of curves. This one's going to incorporate curves, surfaces, and solids, but curves and surfaces will be the main component from which we create our pavilion. And so commands over here are going to be featuring drawing a curve in step one. Step two is going to be connecting that curve into a surface and creating the supports here. And step three is going to be using the uh, bend tool and split tool to actually split those supports that we created in step two and bending the surface so that we can actually create a similar condition to the uh, pavilion created by the Japanese architecture firm uh, SANAA in which they uh, have incorporated uh, here in 2009 as you can see. Okay so let's go ahead and get started. So it'll be the same format as the first video. We will have an image in practice over here, example step one, step two, step three here, and commands to use over here. And in the video, you'll actually post commands as we go so you can quickly see and read them and actually type those specifically into the command line to do the same thing. So I actually have an image of this. So I'll go to, in order to insert uh, images, you can go to surface, plane, and then picture frame, and go and find our uh, plan view here. We go into the top view down here, and let's go and create it right here. Let's turn on our ortho and grid snap so we can get a nice, even, um, straight image. So we get something that looks about roughly the right size. So notice I'm drawing here on module two practice. I already took the liberty of creating that layer before this video started. So I put that directly under the, the practice layers here off to the right. So you can see where those are right there. So let's go ahead and do similar to module one. I'm gonna go into my curve drawing. And I'm gonna use the um, interpolate points curve. And so this will allow us to create uh, curves with points that go through them. Uh, well, the curves go through the points, so it gives a little bit of accuracy. Uh, let's turn off our ortho and grid snap so we can make these uh, fairly organic. And so I'm just going to do this, and then we'll fast forward here to the actual um, uh, next step. There's one other thing I want to mention. Um, let's say you're drawing a curve right here, as you can see. And for example, we accidentally click out of it and we want to continue that curve. I actually type in uh, continue uh, and pull it curve here. The command line is already actually auto filled it in for me. And so I will just click enter and we can continue to pick up right where we left off. Just a nice little trick. Okay, so picking up where we left off, I went around and drew the curve actually in its place. You go into perspective, you can see there it is in contrast with the image. So now what's next? We can move on to creating the surface itself and adding the supports. So let's go ahead and make a copy of this. And you know what? We'll actually, instead of copying the image, we'll, we'll move make a copy of this over to the left so we can keep track of what we have done so far. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and use the cylinder tool and make supports for all the poles that go up. And so made that here and we actually have to go into our view here. We'll make it to a similar height to 
what's going on here. Another trick, if you are extruding something, you can actually hold the tab button down and uh, that white line will appear and it will lock it into place. So then you can actually find the height of another object uh, while after clicking the tab and it'll extrude it straight up to that point, which is a nice little trick. So I'm going to go ahead and click and copy these all around and uh, we'll fast forward to when we have completed that step of the process. Okay, so added these supports. The cylinders made them a little bit thinner to look more like the real thing. And now we have our supports, we have our curve. So let's go ahead and copy all of this. And now we can actually make our surface. So I'll hold Alt and use the gumball to make a copy. So let's go ahead and click on our curve and we can actually use the surface command, create surface from planar curves. And now we actually have a surface under perspective. And we can see that surface there. And so if it makes it a little bit easier to see, you can actually go into the properties of that surface and increase the density over here so that we can begin to make out the surface a little bit better. And now it actually has a density. So let's go ahead and click on that and let's go to our front view and we'll bring it up to a certain height that we feel comfortable with. There we go, we actually didn't uh, erase the curve. So I'll go ahead and delete that. So now we can take the surface and actually uh, bend it into place. So we can begin to go on our front view and uh, can actually take this and type in the bend command and start pick somewhere on the curve or the, or the surface, I'm sorry. And we can begin to literally bend this thing into different sort of shapes. And so if we can go into perspective, you can kind of see how that starts to form out, right? So let's go ahead and, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and move all of this over as well. So we can actually see it in our front view. There we go. So now we have different things happening in different places. So, all right, so you can get the idea of how we can really start to bend the surface into place. And it looks like it's starting to, to take on a much bigger density now since we are beginning to bend this into places. So, so now we need to use the split command in order to actually uh, take our supports and split them above. And so I'll go into the uh, front view. I will type split, select objects to split. We want to split our surface. Let's select our surface, press enter. And then now I need to select cutting objects. And so actually, you no, know I did that backwards. Let's go ahead and type in split, select objects to split. We want to split all our supports. Click enter, click cutting objects. Our cutting object is actually our surface. So let's go ahead and do that. And we will let it do its thing. And it is cutting all of them. And it's thinking. And now it should be good. So you can actually drag across, select all those, and you can see exactly where it split it. So this command is a really great command for splitting objects when you have a surface that maybe isn't super flat or if you're trying to cut it in such a way. Uh, there are multiple, multiple functions in Rhino in which you will use this command. Uh, and so now we can actually just go ahead and delete those. Now we have our surface, our pavilion. On step three, here 
with the bended surface, curved surface, and maybe we can you know, go ahead and decrease that density down to one. So now you can see kind of where it really took shape with the bending of this uh, pavilion. And so a couple of simple commands, but you can see how they can be really useful, uh, especially in modeling uh, uh, Sanu. Uh, S A N A A's pavilion here, um, and yeah. So that is it. Stay tuned for the next tutorial in which we will be going with surfaces to create uh, some really interesting pieces of uh, modeling that Rhino can do.